Welcome to the sci-fi panel. We have 12 different projects that we're going to talk to you guys about today. Um, Stargate the Animated Fan Series started about two years ago and one of the members of our group thought it'd be a good idea to contact MGM and say, here's what we're doing. So MGM did get, wasn't too keen about a fan series and they kind of uh, gave us cease and desist orders to certain people in the group. So we disappeared for that and now we're we're back, we're trying to get everything. We've got a script that picks up right where the series ends. We're going to pick up there and continue on. Um, we're, we're in dire need, though, of people that can do texturing. Yes? There's a huge fan of the Stargate Universe series. It was so sad when they sucked. And they ended it in such a critical time. Right. There have been a number of groups that have either put out short stories or books or uh, I read a series of plays somebody put out right. that were just wonderful. They you know, did a great job of kind of well, getting this going on. How is this different? Um, we're doing it on our own. Um, I'll be honest, I have not read any of the online stuff that people have done. Um, I wrote our pilot. I can give you a base. You know, I can, if people want spoiler alert, I can give you a basic idea of where our story is going to go. Uh, for the pilot, um, it's a three-part episode. The first part is just the crew getting revived and finding out that the ship is is going. Well, when they revive, they find out Eli's not in the stasis pod. He's, they don't know where he is. He's just missing. Um, I have... Um, so when... Young and Young and um, Russia revived, so they revived the rest of the remaining people that went into the last pods. And Young tells um, Chloe and Matt to go check the bridge while they check the rest of the ship. They go to the gate, or they find Rush takes off and he just goes to the apple core and he's like, leave me alone, I'll get to you when I, when I can. Camille's gonna try and contact her and she's not gonna be successful in this episode. Rush will provide the answer in a little bit why. Um, they go to the gate room, they find out that um, they were boarded again by the Lucian Alliance, but they didn't get anywhere. Because when TJ does an initial examination, she finds out that they died of exposure and lack of oxygen. Because Destiny really powered down during this thing. That, um, so, um, they all go to the bridge and they find out that they made it to the new galaxy. They've been, they were recharged in the sun, but they find out, out from Rush that they were in stasis longer than they planned. They were in stasis for six years, not three. And they don't know why. Well, they, um, so they... They know before they revive ever anybody else, they have to get food because Destiny's not going to have the food for, for, for them, let alone anybody else. So they find the, this episode ends with them finding a planet that has some food, and then the next episode picks up with them getting the food. And they start trying to find out what happened to Eli. That sounds, that sounds wonderful. It sounds like a fantastic premise. Yeah. The, the second part. I'd like to welcome uh, everybody who couldn't make it into Shatter. Um, <laughs> That's okay, we're going to do Star Trek. Exactly. We're gonna, we're gonna, that's all right. We're keeping it. We're saving it. So Bingo. Right, there you go. We're doing, we're doing the important work over here. What's your name, sir? My name is Sal Lagonian. Um, I'm a professional writer. I'm from, uh, I work out of New York. I own a production company over there. Cool. And um, it's the, the, I'm sure you're asking right now, I mean, what is Star Trek card? Instead of asking me questions, I'll tell you. Uh, it's, I think, uh, the story really goes all the way back to um, season four of Enterprise. Enterprise was on its way out, everybody knew it. 
and I was a young, naive film student figuring, you know, this business isn't nearly as hard as it looks. And uh, a friend of my best friend, uh, Rob, who is now my art director, and I were talking about, he was a big Star Trek fan, we always would get together after Star Trek and talk about it, and uh, we we talked about, well, okay, what would we do differently? What would we, how would we have fixed this? And could we have fixed this concept? Could it have been better? And that night I just, I, I started getting, you know, some ideas, I wrote them down, they were terrible. Uh, <laughs> they were the ramblings of a film student. And, uh, you know, and I figured, okay, well maybe I can do some research on the tech, tech community, maybe I can come up with a, a series. Man, I love this show, I've watched it since I was a little kid, bet you I can get into, in, into this somehow. So I go through and figure, okay, a couple weeks, talk to some people in the community, yeah. Five years later, I came up with a TV series. Um, it took me five years to get through everything. Books, fan fiction, going to conventions, talking to people, trying to get Pulse of the Nation, what, is, what do people really, really want? Came up with some ideas, and they weren't well received, they weren't very good. Came up with some more ideas, came up with some more ideas, if anybody knows writing, it's all about perseverance, you just keep going and going and grinding until the idea comes out. Finally, the idea came out. We finally had an idea that focus grouped beautifully. Every Trek fan that came in said, oh, this is exactly what I want to see, this is it. So we go to, so I go to CBS about it. Um, I was pitching a couple of shows for CBS uh, that had nothing to do with Star Trek. And um, mentioned, Star, mentioned Cardinal, ah, Star Trek, we're not doing Star Trek right now. All right, fine. I go pitch another series for just to CBS. Oh, by the way, I still got this Cardinal thing. Can we, can we talk about that? <laughs> eh, we're not really doing Star Trek. Finally, I go to talk to CBS about a new show. And finally, they want to talk about Cardinal. And I said, all right, fine. You've been, you, you know, it's the same guy that I've been pitching to over and over again. TV is the oldest business in the world. You sit there in a room and you pitch to people. It has not been updated since <laughs> Thomas Edison. <laughs> and and uh, it's the same people, it's the same old people that I've been talking to. And uh, they say, all right, fine. Pitch your damn show. And so I pitch the show. And they say, okay, we love it, but there's no way in hell we're going to make it. It's Star Trek, and we don't make Star Trek. Yeah, but it's Star I mean, come on. You've got this big built-in fan base. There's 12 and a half million people showed up to watch Enterprise's premiere. You, you've, got a, you've got this big built-in base. We can grow the base. We can turn it into this. Eh, nobody watches science fiction. Yeah, nah, nah. Again, 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 again. I keep going back to CVS. Every time I bring it up, Cardinal, keep talking. Eventually, they basically tell me, look, Paramount's doing the movies. We're not doing a series until that's over. When that's over, we'll talk. So going through the traditional channels, obviously, it's a roadblock after roadblock after roadblock. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a bit of a grassroots movement going. So we're trying to get some people out there in the community to get together, send the letters, tell them, you know, get, get on, the, on the websites, get on the Facebook page, start to you know, show some interest in the show, start to show the people that there's still a science fiction community out there that's actually going to watch the show. It's uh, taking place 25 years after Voyager, far enough in the future that we're not constantly bumping into everybody that we used to have, but close enough that we can still tie up some loose ends. Um, and it's based around a um, border patrol ship called the Cardinal. Now, Captain Winters, who's uh, in charge of the ship, he's, he used to be a great man, he used to be a great captain, Jim Kirk style, uh, cowboy diplomacy sort of, you know, run in, save the day. We even start the episode with a flashback of him rushing in, you know, like the, 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 the uh, running behind the stagecoach, rushing on, grabbing the damsel in distress, the whole bit. A big Western fan. And uh, basically, if we, we go to the future, if we go to where we are now, the, the present, circa 2403, and uh, he's not quite the same man. Years on this job have just worn him down. He's had to deal with that. He has had to deal with the media. He has had to deal with not ever seeming to fix anything. It's like he saved the day, he saved the day, he saved, and then more trouble just comes up. And he's broken down, and he doesn't want to do this anymore. And he's decided, you know what, I, maybe it's over. Maybe, I, maybe I've done my part for king and country, and I'm done. And he finally is convinced by his friends, the Admiral, Take the ship out, you know, come on, we, we need you, we need, we need you out there, basically. And he decides, all right, they've got this one mission to change my mind. And he, it's a very simple, it's a little routine mission, goes to uh, check some supplies that are missing. And the supplies are, in fact, missing. And the uh, people, and he basically decides, well, it's uh, probably a, you know, it looks like a way of evidence that it might be some sort of Romulan ship. I'll file a report, I'll get back to you. 
you know, that kind of thing. Exactly what the, what the person was looking for, because as it turns out, this guy is not a regular person. He's the guy, the mysterious being, is all I'm going to say. He convinces him, you know what, if you don't shape up, if you don't go back to who you were, and you don't be this beacon of light now that you used to be, it's all over. Because, you know, one, you know, one man can make a difference. You're the man. Without you, it's all over. He shows him a, a terrible view of the future. Humanity is annihilated. The earth is annihilated. Things are, things are bad. You're the only one that can stop this. I'm not going to tell you how. I'm just going to tell you that you're the only one that can stop this. Go out, be the beacon, be the cowboy, be the, be the guy you used to be. Cast with this new motivation, he goes out and he takes control of the ship. But it's not going to be easy. He's got a crew that all incredibly talented individuals, but there's something stopping each of them from reaching their potential. They don't really gel particularly well. He's going to have to bring them all together. He's going to have to bring this ship together. This ship is a, is a beautiful, you can see it's a very unorthodox ship, but because of its unorthodoxy, it also is a rather dangerous. It has a lot of problems, it has a lot of issues to it, that it doesn't, it, the components don't really blend, in case you couldn't figure that metaphor out. Um, it's, had, it's, it's primary uh, greatness is built around this amazing sublight engine that it has, which malfunctioned and killed its crew on a shakedown cruise. In other words, he's got he's to wind up wrestling with this with the ship, making this ship what the, could be the greatest ship in the fleet, into for, from this uh, from the ship that's not particularly functioning well to this greatest ship in the fleet. He's got to take this crew that are you know somewhat more of the forgotten type and turn them into uh, this, to the, to the great crew that they could be. Already, the pilot is, is already into shooting script format, it's already budgeted, it's already set up, uh, because I needed it for the pitch sessions. Uh, we've actually written uh, 18 episodes already, we have five seasons plotted out, um, but uh, it, you know, this has been a labor of love. All through, all through my time, I'm a, again, I'm a professional writer, between projects, what do I do? I write, it's the only thing I like doing. So, uh, besides baseball. <laughs> so. Uh, if, so when I don't have anything to do, I always come back, oh, okay, well, I'll start a Cardinal script and write that. And we have a very talented team with me. As a professional, I own a production company, so I have a lot of industry people with me. Uh, my art director has designed a beautiful ship. I've, I've, he's gotten some of my art designers to make some of the designs. You can see it right here. You can come up. I'll, I'll show you some closer views uh, on the flyer. You can see a particularly good image of it. This has been years in the making. Uh, we uh, toured submarines. We... Uh, studied uh, sh uh, starship design and symmetry and the theory of warp travel and all of this other stuff to make a ship that would uh, that we were very happy with. We, it's a very uh, unique ship, it's a very unique addition. Basically this entire show is very unique. It's, it, it sounds like it's this big, heavy, serious, it's actually an incredibly funny show when you get down to it. Uh, this is this is the ship uh, nobility, the CAS nobility. Uh, this is basically going to be at the moment uh, they've got funding right now for two seasons of the show. Uh, they're going to be ten minute episodes, I believe, six in each one. Each one's going to have its own story arc. And basically, like I said before, it's supposedly what it's supposed to be is. No, uh, Firefly meet the office. It's gonna be a drama. It's gonna be, you know, have, you know, be very funny, and it's gonna have basically a crew that's anything but noble. So that's how uh, EJ puts it. We also have an interview with him in, our, in one of our podcasts, I believe, it was the second one. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. Uh, like I said, if you go to their website, nobilitythesearches.com, they're always looking for more help with funding. Um, and all of these projects are always going to come up with advertisements. We do have a, our, own, our first original uh, content that we're, that we're going to be starting work on soon called Project YXM. It's going to be, at present, a, um, a, narr like a narrated graphic novel. I don't know if you have, an if you have Android or anything in you. Yeah, sure. Have you ever seen the graphic novel, um, what was it, it was, uh, Anom it was Anomaly? Uh, I mean, I've heard of Anomaly. Anomaly, it's this, it's a graphic novel, um, and everything is <coughs> narrated 
along with having them, you know, the, the bubble, the speech bubbles on the page during the other scenes, and it is narrated. And um, and that's basically what we're going to do for our first virtual project. And it's written by a guy, in, by Brian uh, Bear, he's in Japan. Uh -huh. um, so it's kind of a graphic novel, right, Brian? Yes, and we're, but we need voice acts. Oh, you need voice that's the thing. Cool. And we're going to be opening auditions at some point in the next, I'd like to say, month. Um, we're still finishing out the script and everything. Sure. We've got two books, which are The Deep Darkness and The Star Crystal. Um, the both of the authors are located in Australia, but you can get them online. Uh, the Deep Darkness is on Indiegogo right now, looking for crowdfunding. Gridian, uh, Stasis, and Origin are all, uh, are all currently in progress. They're going to be web series. Stasis won a, they've won a uh, film contest. And Origin and Gwydion are still in early production stages. Strange Frame is a movie produced by G.B. Hajim. And he's in Hawaii. Uh, it's an animated sci-fi movie. Infinite TV is, uh, is another web series in progress. Uh, and yes, Moral You is a sci-fi web series. <laughs> More towards the fantasy sci-fi mix. Uh, yes, uh, people who have uh, superhuman abilities, uh, more superpowers.